The Deuter Aviant Carry-On Pro 36 is a 36 liter backpack with a lot of organization and a men's and women's fit as well. I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker, where we use our expertise and real world experience to provide practical resources and honest opinions, guiding you towards smarter travel. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's jump right into the Deuter Aviant Carry-On Pro 36, a bag that I've personally been testing, the men's version here for the last week in Detroit, and Taylor, our writer and contributor, has been using it for a two-week trip to Europe. So let's dive in and check out all the details. And one last thing before we do, feel free to head over to packhacker.com, take a look at the full review with photos, as well as the best buying options for this bag. Let's jump into the review. Kicking it off with the overall look and feel of the Deuter 36 liter Aviant Carry-On Pro, it's got a nice travel bag aesthetic to it. Something that matches something similar to the popular Osprey Farpoint 40. So it definitely has that look and feel across the board. At the time of this review, the bag comes in a couple of different colorways from the men's and the women's version. The men's version comes in black, Midnight Navy and Khaki Ivy, which is the colorway that we have here. The women's version comes in three colorways as well. We have the Maroon Aubergine, Black, and Denim Arctic. The women's version comes with this removable flower on the side to indicate that it's a women's version. It feels a little bit heavy handed to us and Taylor took it off immediately when she got the bag. From a branding perspective, we have a Deuter logo at the front of the bag up here. And then flipping it around to the back, we have it on these straps above the foam padding of the back panel, and then on these zipper pulls as well. We also have the name of the bag here, the Aviant Carry-On Pro 36. That's a decent amount of type and logos on the outside of this bag, but that's typically what you get for a travel backpack with this aesthetic. We pulled our Instagram audience to get their thoughts on the look of this bag, and here are the results. Make sure to go follow at PackHacker on Instagram if you wanna be involved in future polls. The main fabric on the exterior of this bag is a polyamide and polyester blend. This is a decent fabric for a travel backpack. Again, a similar feel to the Osprey Farpoint 40. It is nice and soft to the touch, and has some decent durability qualities as well. Another thing to note here is that there is foam padding used on some of the areas of the exterior of this bag that helps it hold its shape even while it's empty. And we like that, it keeps the bag looking slick. Some other thinner bags can start to look a little bit wonky and sort of lose their shape as you start filling it up with gear of different sizes. But at the same time, it's not overkill on foam. So there's just enough to help keep the shape, but not too much to make it bulky or unwieldy. Wrapping up with some other key materials on the bag, we have some durable YKK zippers used throughout, and then we have some YKK buckles and plastic hardware on some of the adjustment areas as well. Starting with the harness system, this one is pretty comfortable, so let's dive in and see why. Starting with the straps, there is a decent amount of padding, which makes it very comfortable to carry. The way that the harness system is anchored, it's a little bit lower, so you have this weight at the top behind your back, and that can help the bag feel a little bit more balanced while you're carrying it. Moving on down, we have the sternum strap here, covered by a little flap of welted fabric, and that hides this PALS-like webbing here where you can attach and detach the sternum strap. We like the way the sternum strap is attached. It is a semi-permanent fit. We have lost a decent amount of sternum straps on other bags that don't have this permanent of an attachment. The strap adjusters at the bottom here are pretty nice and glide pretty easily as well. The foam back panel provides some nice airflow to avoid that sweaty back. And although with any bag, you're pretty much gonna get a sweaty back depending on the climate that you're in, this one does a pretty great job with airflow. Behind this, there is a luggage pass-through as well. So if you're using this bag with roller luggage, you can just stick it on the top and wheel it around through the airport. Taylor and I found that the harness system was pretty comfortable for both men and women, but there are a couple of drawbacks. The entire harness system can unbuckle and stow behind the back panel, which is great. However, we have found that these straps can come undone without warning. Between Taylor and I and our testing for three weeks, it has happened a total of three times. This seems to happen when the bag is jostled around and those buckles are bumped on the sides. This isn't great if you're throwing on the bag quickly and trying to sprint through the airport to catch a flight. That's basically the last time that you'd want these straps to disengage 
We wish that they would have considered designing this in a little bit of a different way in order to mitigate that problem. And lastly, there is no hip belt option on this bag at all. And that's basically gonna be up to you whether that matters or not. At 36 liters, we think it's nice to at least give people the option, really anything above 30 liters, and we think at least an option for a hip belt is nice. The rest of this bag is pretty minimal and we like it that way. There are no water bottle pockets on the sides, no extra doodads or rows of pals webbing going on. We just have a nice handle at the top here, which is the right amount of padding, and then one on the side as well. Plus we like the sewing and the attachment point, especially that it's a little bit angled. So this strap isn't exactly centered in the bag, but that angle helps offset the weight a little bit of the bag and helps it carry it straight up and down. Moving on to the inside of the pack, starting with the front pocket. This basically opens up to a giant compartment. This pocket is enclosed with a number five YKK racket coil zipper, which is the standard for bags and luggage in the travel category. Next up, let's take a look at the big tech organization pocket in the back of the bag. This uses a number eight YKK zipper and opens up like this. There's a ton of organization going on here, so let's run right through it. Near the wearer's back, we have a laptop compartment that should fit a 15 inch laptop nicely. It definitely fits my MacBook Pro. Might even fit laptops of a little bit larger size. This closes with a small Velcro strap, which is a little bit hard to fasten and seems a bit misaligned in our version. The nice thing about this laptop compartment is that it is centered inside of the bag, which will help protect it from unexpected drops. Plus, it's got some padding as well. In front of that, we have two pockets, a stretchy mesh pocket that's good for a notebook or a tablet, and then a zippered pocket on the side of that that opens up basically a giant pocket with a key ring inside as well. Opposite of this organization, we have two mesh pockets that are stretchy, similar to the first, but a little bit smaller. And then we have a liner divider pocket that is good for flatter items or documents. We think the organization is great, but a little bit overkill. This pocket has a lot of volume, which means that it takes away from the space used for clothes. Sure, you can use this pocket for clothing if you'd like, and everything lays pretty flat if you don't wanna utilize it. But if you have more clothing than you do tech, it's a little bit large. Moving on to the main compartment of this bag, it opens up fully clamshell style. Towards the wearer's back, we have a zippered liner pocket that takes up about half of the bag in size. The zippered pocket also features some gusseting, which will allow you to hold gear that's a little bit larger if you need to. It's important to note that the gusset is on the side that goes into the clothing pocket and won't really affect the main volume of the tech organization compartment that we just covered. Opposite of that, we have a big zippered mesh pocket that does a good job at securing packing cubes and clothing inside of the main compartment. Inside of the main compartment, we have two compression straps that are great for holding clothing in place and packing cubes. Towards the bottom, there is a removable shoe compartment that we really dig. It is held in place by four toggles, so it stays securely in place when you want it and then easily removes when you don't. As mentioned earlier, Taylor and I have been using this bag for a total of three weeks between Europe and Detroit. In actual use, we found the tech pocket to be a little bit larger and a little bit overdone. On Taylor's trip, she ended up using this space for her laptop, but also just more clothing. She didn't need to utilize every single little pocket going on here. One other note here is that a lot of the organization inside of this bag is sideways. It's important to note this and be conscious of how you're carrying the bag and how you're setting it down. So if you have a lot of your items perfectly organized inside, they may get jostled around and disorganized inside of the main compartment of this pack, especially since a lot of the pockets don't have zippers. Luckily, the handle's on the correct side, and when you're carrying it in briefcase mode, the items will be right side up. Lastly, Taylor loved using the front stash pocket for a lot of snacks. She's vegan, so she can't eat a ton while she's on the road. It was nice for her to have this massive compartment just basically filled with vegan snacks on the road. So to wrap this thing up with some pros and cons, starting with the pros, there was a comfortable carry in the men's and women's versions. The removable shoe compartment is a nice touch and we think it's a great feature to include in this bag. There's some great airflow with the mesh back panel as you're carrying the bag around. Onto some of the cons, the straps can detach without warning. The tech organization pocket is a little bit large, overkill in our opinion. Lastly, there is no option for a hip belt. We think bags of 30 liters and up should at least have an option to attach a hip belt. 
At the end of the day, the Deuter Aviant Carry-On Pro 36 is a solid backpack for travel at a great price. It's got that travel backpack vibe and the features and organization to go along with it. Sometimes you may run into the strap disengaging randomly, but if you're okay with that, this bag is a solid choice for one bag travel. So there you have it, our review of the Deuter Carry-On Pro 36. We would love to hear what you think of this thing in the comments below, so please be sure to let us know. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next video.